Hey guys, I'm going to walk you through how to reconstitute a vial of CJC and ipamorlin. Often these are in the same vial, so this can be a little bit confusing about how to dose it and how to reconstitute it, but without further ado, let's get into it. So this vial is 5 milligrams of both CJC and ipamorlin, so I'm going to tell you a good dose for the both of them because you'll be taking them at the same time. I'm using a 1 ml syringe with an 18 gauge needle just to pull back um, pretty quickly with the bacteriostatic water. I'm doing this twice, so two full milliliters or 100 units times two if you're using an insulin syringe. Make sure it's exact, make sure there's no bubbles or air because then obviously you're not getting the full two milliliters and that will affect the dosing of your peptide. So we are injecting the peptide very slowly. So make sure it's trickling in, the bacteriostatic water is trickling into the side of the glass wall of your peptide and not going directly into the powder. The peptides are fragile. You must not slam them with water going in really fast. Um, you don't want to affect the potency or the purity. And then after you're going to gently mix all of the bacteriostatic water in with the powder and let that sit for about an hour in the refrigerator in a cool space protected from light and then you'll be ready to take your first dose. So a good dose for CJC is 100 to 300 micrograms daily. The lower end is more common for anti-aging benefits and recovery while the higher doses support more muscle growth and fat loss. A good dose for ipamorlin is going to be 200 to 300 micrograms daily. So I like to start my patients at 100 micrograms of each, which will look like four units. I'll show you here and then work them up to 200 micrograms, which is eight units. So they are taking this Monday through Friday or Sunday through Thursday. I typically find about five nights a week and then two nights off is a very good therapeutic dosing that you'll see the benefits with without having to do it every single night. And then this is what an injection should look like. You're going to pinch the skin and inject in that subcutaneous top fat layer. It shouldn't hurt too much. You may feel some flushing afterwards, some heat. This is normal, it should pass about 20 minutes. This is from the Ipamorlin's short half-life, about two hours. But it's really that 30 minutes after that you are going to get a histamine release that is kind of a hot, um, warmth, redness, flushing feeling. And that's caused by the Ipamorlin. So that's another know it's important to also not eat two hours before and ideally a half hour plus afterwards you want to be injecting cjc and ipamorlin on an empty stomach and letting that half-life peak and then eating after that so you're maximizing the benefits of this peptide so just keep those things in mind and that's about it thanks for joining and let me know if you guys have any questions now you know how to reconstitute cjc and ipamorlin in the same vial and how you can dose it you don't have to dose it this way this is just an option there's many different ways but i find that this is um, a therapeutic dose that works well for my patients and we see and get the results that they are looking for